Okay, my outstanding friends, fun, fun, fun today at Mud Fossil University. You know, I've been speaking about Fermilab for a while. They're trying to find the muons and electron showers and the things that I believe I can show. And this is Don Lincoln, and we went back and forth for a while and sort of parted ways. But he's saying, why can't you go faster than light? Now, I haven't watched this. I just saw this right now. It just came out shortly ago and um, we're going to go in and look at it but you can exceed the if light is travels only at one speed I can guarantee you we can change that speed no question whatsoever and increase it okay I'm going to show you some laser light and they say yes all laser beams are light and travel at the speed of light so they're consistently one speed well let's see about that okay I, I'm going to just have to show you this is they're just wrong about the speed of light. If that's laser light, which it is, it's from a red laser, we're using CMOS technology to see this, and I can give you the statistics on how the Samsung phone works. And th these are made, taken by a Samsung smartphone. And it has all kinds of features built into it, and all this stuff is just... It's just absolutely amazing, but they can use them as cosmic ray detectors, and it's strictly due to the extreme high energy, and then they take all the pixels that are affected, and then they have some kind of program that they run them through, and it turns them into images of energies and polar fields and everything. Now, if that's light, which it is, it's coming through the air, and it's that's accelerating there is no question whatsoever not a person on the face of the earth can say that's a stay in the same speed who could possibly say that now what happened here that's a crusher we had we created us an accelerator this is an accelerator crusher it does both things at the same time and what does it do it pulls the particle out from the wave so it exceeds the magnetic wave because normally that was a magnetic wave and the particles back here so it's particle wave duality yes and this is the particle and that is the actual particle that light is made of that's the particle lights made of and nobody's ever known that had a dark side two particles together which are both little bar magnets basically make up a photon one of them each side of this is an electron but an electron has dark matter attached and that is heavy as hell so if there's a person on the face of the planet wants to tell me that that is not accelerating and this right here the blue same same situ whoops, same situation with the blue it was accelerated here and now it's slowing down as it approaches a different you know after it gets through the venturi it's being forced through like squirted through just like a hose literally just uh, almost identical to a hose and the only reason it's doing that is because of the design of the venturi and then because we got that done it actually separated the particles and that is what CERN wants to see and here they are right here the black and the white separated that's fission that's fusion they came back together the muons electron showers so I'd love to talk to Don uh, Lincoln and at Fermi and um, I think that I would love to show this research to him to show him that we can accelerate faster than the speed of light and um, it's not surpassable un unsurpassable okay one more time the speed of light if it's just one speed that's it well that's not the same speed as that it's accelerating so we know that's a fact that we can accelerate light so this is not in a vacuum which means means it's even more significant because it's going through particles that normally would restrict it and slow it down it's going through that even faster than it would in, in a vacuum it would just rocket ship through there'd be nothing to slow it down so this is the particle we saw. We saw that particle separate. We saw, well, I don't know if you did or not. Hold on a second. Let me just be sure you know this. Th this is the particle separating here, the black and the white. And the reason the white goes through there, because it's just a little fluffy part. Here's what they look like. Literally, they look just like this. And I'm going to show them to you because we've photoed them. 
They look just like this. And when they hit the, the venturi, they separate. And this can squish right through. And this goes bam, 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 bam. This cannot concuss. It compress. It can't compress. And it's heavier than hell. And I've seen them in the atomic bomb blast where the first thing that happens is everything burns. And then everything goes flying. Because the first thing that comes out is the white. And that's a burner. And the second is, is a burner. And the second one that comes out is the slammer. And this is the slammer. All right. Now, let, I'm going to show you what these actually look like as they're f coming through the air. All right, here they are right here. Right, this is right here. There's one here and one like that. These are each electrons. That's the dark matter part. Nobody knew it was there. This, one, this part here can glow and puff up and, and charge. See it? Because it's hitting what's in front of it which is all the particles in the air and every particle in the air has electrons too so those electrons bump into these electrons it's a fully understood principle it's push to shove it's just you know you rub your hands together the same thing happens it heats up and it glows and all that you probably hands don't probably glow a lot anyway then this one is little see the big one and the little one and the big and the, these don't change and these but buggers are slammers and that's what squirts the, the stuff through we could do this all day long we can create these muons and bosons and all the things they're looking for you see right there we do that all day long it's going to take a little time to reset this whole thing up this was six seven years ago we did this rod warren and i did this research and it went on for a couple of years and we figured for sure somebody's going to jump in on it and not another single person did i even went to the university of geneva for um, particle physics and I said let's look into this and they, they weren't interested so it's got to be looked at please somebody because if we can use this I've already come up with a design hold on I had it here somewhere uh, here it is. you see that that increase this is literally atomic energy that's subatomic energy this is is this is exactly like an atomic bomb going off no difference whatsoever <laughs> only it's in light it's not in gigantic big particles that's throwing on hand grenades we're just shooting off photons and they jump right back together but if we can harvest them right in here we have it's just as much energy as the atomic bomb gives off we have to harvest it just before it comes back to the dark matter and force it through our devices and into, you know, battery storage and everything because they're nothing but raw electrons. They're nothing but the white particles. And they'll find a dark particle within the matrix that they're headed into. And that's through a motor, through a light, through a, you know, whatever it is. Free energy. It's almost, we could almost do it overnight and it's so cheap that you could make those devices for a few bucks a piece. And I think you could run a car with one. Okay, probably Don maybe doesn't understand it, but they've just found this tetraquark recently. And that is the particle I'm showing. It has a field around it and the four particles in the center. Okay, it would be pretty hard for somebody to dispute the fact that I just showed you light accelerating. And I showed you the particles literally separating. That's fission, fusion. I showed the whole nine yards. And that is the sterile muon neutrino and the uh, electron showers. Precisely what they're looking for. So I think I deserve an audience with Don. Now, let's see what he has to say about light going faster than light and why we can't. Okay, this is Don Lincoln from Fermilab, and he's going to be talking about faster than light. So here we go. Why can't you go faster than light? Over the past hundred years or so, scientists have pushed our understanding of the universe into some extreme conditions. For example, the world of the very small, the realm of very high speeds, and under the frigid conditions of near absolute zero. While each of us have developed an intuition about how the world works, it's very important to remember that this intuition only applies to a very limited set of conditions. For instance, there is absolutely no reason to expect that matter will act the same in the center of the sun as it does here on Earth on a bright and sunny day. However, that last statement is hard for some people to accept, and judging by my email inbox, 
the extreme realm that causes people the most difficulty is what happens when things are going super fast. In 1905, Albert Einstein published his theory of special relativity. It predicts all sorts of mind-blowing things. For instance, distance shorten and clocks slow down. I made another video about how clocks act at high speed. It turns out that all of those seemingly crazy implications originate from a single cause, or maybe two if we take it slow. So first, let me tell you what this video isn't. It doesn't tell you about the postulates that Einstein used to build his intuition, and it certainly doesn't derive his equations. I, I, I got to just stop right here, Don. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. It's just going on about kind of things that just don't work when you go into electron flood theory, which I just showed you. Electrons and photons have poles. They, ha they are dipoles. They are, there is no such thing as a single electron which is negative. Now they know they can smash protons down into little tiny bitty pieces. They've seen these. The muon and the electron neutrinos. They've seen them. They know that they can do that. But they see them in a pile of trash. And then they just try to figure out are these the tiniest things or what's going on there. And then but they are the most subatomic particles. I showed you they came from light. We didn't you start with protons. So we showed, a, I, well, I showed you a photon, back-to-back -back electrons. Basically, that's it. 1839 of these together turn into a little ball called a proton. And a proton has the dark core inside, and the white particles are primarily on the outside. They surround the dark matter. That's why we've never seen the dark matter before. It's inside. The only way we could see it was to smash it into bits, like they did in their particle accelerator, but they went like that. We squirted it through and forced the fields to crush. They're doing nothing different. They're crushing field to field. Absolute same thing, only theirs can go this way and go that way and go up this way and go this way. Ours, they have to go through that tunnel at the same time, and they are being forced with the dark matter, because it is just like bowling balls against little sponges. Okay, I just want to make a point. I have, I'm sure, as much physics as Don does, and probably a hell of a lot more. And I knew back 50 years ago that everything was dipoles. There was no such a thing as a big, gigantic, positive core with tiny little negatives floating around. They would have popped right in. And any normal person would know that. Look, this is dipole theory. Two dipoles, the only, only the thing there was was dipole. And I didn't get to this just by guessing. And then I came up with the theory that all light, transfer of energy from light is to atomic vapor. That is, and I just showed you, it is atomic vapor. Atoms, it turns, they're subatomic vapor, really. But I, did, I, didn't, I didn't do this just one day. That, I did this forever, and I'm still doing it now. I have books and books and books of this stuff. And I... And I work in every realm in, in science. So if I could talk with Don, I would appreciate it because I have things to present. He says I have a physics degree. Well, I don't have a degree to present. So they say we won't talk to you because you're not, you don't have a degree and you're not peer-reviewed because you're not one of our peers because you don't have a degree. I said, well, who needs a degree? I have the evidence. So Don, please, let's talk, my friend. That's all I ask.